my name is Virginia Sengson, and I'm the curator of Woven Identities of Japan, Kimono, and Costumes, which is going to be at the Clark Center from now until January 28, 2012. It's a really great exhibition that showcases both kimono and costume throughout history, and we discuss not only what the garments would have said about the wearer, but also the different techniques used to produce them. This mannequin is wearing an ensemble called um, Itsutsuki Nuko Jigi, and this is a 20th century reproduction of a Heian curated noblewoman's ensemble. This is a semi formal costume. It would have been worn by an unmarried woman, as you can see from the dark maroon trousers. Um, she's wearing an outer robe with a crest of three. Uh, blossoms that is used as the symbol of the Tokugawa family. And if you can see here, the white part of her costume is the early prototype of the kimono, and this is called a kosode, and it originated as an undergarment during the Heian period. This is an uchikake, which is a type of garment that was worn as the unbelted outer layer of an ensemble. Um, this would not have been worn with an obi around it. It would have been draped around the shoulders and then trailed behind the lady as she walked indoors. Um, this is a really great example. It's made of plain weave blue silk and it's covered with elaborate embroidery that recalls courtly themes in the Heian period. Um, we have kicho, which are curtains that were made to hide women from the eyes of men in the imperial court. And then down here we have a tsuri daiko, which is a type of drum that was used during um, imperial court music. And then we have this pattern of maple trees and clouds. This item is a hitatare, which is a no costume that was made during the early to mid 20th century. Um, it's made out of hemp and it's decorated with katazome or stencil resist dyeing, which you can see right here and on the bottom half. And this motif of cranes with tortoise is very popular for hitatare decorations. Um, this was made to mimic a lord's costume uh, during the courtly period, so wearing this on stage would suggest a man who was of a higher military class. This is an example of a kawabori, or leather coat, and this was worn by a fire brigade leader for ceremonial purposes or parades. It's made completely out of leather, and it's patterned using a technique called inden, which involves protecting certain parts of the leather and then slowly smoking it. So here we have a pattern that would have been protected by um, a paper stencil, and then the entire piece of leather would have been smoked over a very low fire of pine needles and rice grass, and that would have darkened the unprotected leather to this really beautiful orange-brown and the protected part remains white to create beautiful patterns. This child's kimono is made of propaganda textiles. This is a type of textile that was made before the war in Japan, and it reflected the very nationalistic and pro-militaristic sentiment of the time. So here we have fighter pilots, um, we have battleships, bugles, um, hats, as well as an armored car. This probably would have been worn by a young boy. Um, most propaganda textiles were worn by men or boys.